So where are we now? Well, P&D proper came into existence May 2012, really. <clears throat> That's when there was a national pool which you could properly search. Every single police force in England and Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland, so the whole of the UK, uploads into P&D. We're talking about a vast number. It's over 230 local systems upload into P&D. So it's, it's a vast system. Um, so it's, it's every single police force in the whole of the UK. And everything they upload breaks down into crime, custody, intel, child abuse, and domestic abuse. And broadly speaking, their systems tend to relate to one or more of those topics. And that uh, currently comes to 2.2 billion records and rapidly growing. It is big. It is hard to get your head around the size of it. It's big. And it doesn't involve double keying for any of the agencies that are uploading into it. Because everything they put on their local systems, where appropriate, is uploaded directly into PND. And PND does the reformatting, so you don't get this, this mess in PND when you're looking at stuff, across stuff. Every single intelligence record or crime report or whatever in PND is a standard format in PND. It sorts out the local formats and reformats everything so that it is standard across the whole system. So there's no extra effort from individuals within the agencies that are uploading. Accessing it, well, it's classified as a confidential database. So it's quite a high level of accreditation. So it can take confidential data, something that's GPMS classified as confidential data. Don't get me started on the new government security markings. Um, but it's quite a high level of accreditation. And that has meant historically that in order to access it, it's been actually quite tricky for some agencies, and for the police for that matter, because they have to be in a confidential environment to meet that, meet that accreditation. However, now we have a restricted channel that's available. So... Anyone who works in a normally restricted environment, like police, for instance, or UKBA or HMIC, they normally work in restricted environments. It means they'll be able to access PND from their desktop if their local IT wish to set that up for them. They will lose a tiny fraction of access to data in PND, but it's less than 1%, actually. It's just under 1% of data that's uploaded into PND is GPMS, Government Protective Marketing Scheme, marked as confidential. Everything else is, is restricted, or lower than restricted, for that matter. There are lots and lots of controls that can be put on the data, I must add. Every user has role-based access controls on their accounts. Um, there's things called dark data access restriction codes that can be put onto all of the data. And there's all sorts of other things that can be done to, to tie down data. So there's, there's really no excuse for not uploading into PND something that is confidential or below. 